Welcome to the Python programming part of the course and in this video we're going to look at how to set up Python um, on our computer. So I have run in here a uh, Windows 10 computer and I'm just going to go online I'm going to search download Python okay and the first thing that should come up should be a link to download Python so when we get to this sort of yellow and blue page here just going to click this yellow button to download Python and this will work for Windows this little pop-up box with the Python installer exe should pop up just hit save and then once this is downloaded we're just going to run the exe file now that the Python installer has downloaded we're just going to click on the exe file to run and this open file box should pop up and we're just going to click run and this will bring up the python installer now in the python installer okay we're going to click install and we're going to ensure that we just select the default options okay and then just hit install and python will install automatically for you now the next thing that we need to do is we need to click on start okay and just type cmd all right and this is going to bring up an option for the command prompt okay and we're going to press the return key to open that and this will bring up the command line on the windows computer i'm just going to make the font a little bit bigger so that we can see it so let's go for font uh, we'll stick it up to 24 so that everyone is able to see. Okay. Right. Now, when we installed Python, okay, Python comes with a default basic editor called idle. And if we click start here, idle should be installed. And if we click on idle to open it up, this will give us a Python shell here. Okay. Now, if the Python shell is working, if we do 2 plus 2, that's going to return 4, okay? If we want to create a new Python program, we can do new file, and that'll give us this blank window here to write into. But idle is a very basic IDE. Very, very basic. It's okay for, for starting off with. We want to install something more suited to data science. So what we're going to do is, Python actually comes with a package installer called pip. So, so it stands for Python install package, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to type pip install, okay? And then we're going to type Jupyter lab, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R lab. And then just press return, okay? And we're going to see the matrix on the screen. Lots of things happening. Now, it says that it's already installed on mine because I've already actually run this, okay? So I'm just going to clear up the screen, so CLS in the command line on Windows to clear the screen. And now if we type Jupyter, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R, um, space lab, okay, and just press the return key, what that's going to do is that's going to launch Jupyter lab for us. Okay, so we should see this uh, kind of loading screen come up here. And now that we're into Jupyter lab, it's going to ask us to choose a kernel um, and the kernel is just the kind of what's going to process the Python code in the background. So leave that set to Python 3 and select and this is going to give us a new notebook file. Now in this notebook file um, if we were to type for example uh, print okay and open up our brackets and hello and then if I press control return, okay, this is going to return as hello. I probably better zoom that in a little bit so we can see. So over at the side here, we have our file manager. And what I've actually done is I've created the first lab in Python as a notebook file that will run inside Jupyter. So what we're going to do to open that is go to the Moodle page and we navigate to week 7 data capture and modeling and then we click on the data science python lab 1 and download that to our local machine in Jupyter lab 
we should be able to browse to the downloads folder in our file explorer over in this uh, side pane here. Just double clicking on the file should open it up and we should have something like this. And this is our Jupyter Notebook file. This is our lab file. So any, any um, these are called code cells, okay? And if you double click on one of them, you can actually have a look at the code I used to create this. So um, this is called a markdown cell, okay? And this allows us to display a text. And this is a code cell. So for example, let's say um, I want to run a particular cell. I just click into the cell and then press control and return, okay? And that will be run, that will be interpreted by the IPython kernel. Okay, so here's an example where we're going to print out the letter I uh, using asterisk. So I'm just going to run that now. And you'll see that underneath that prints out the letter I there. So taking a slightly different form from the R labs, what we're going to do with the, uh, the Jupyter notebooks is we're just going to follow through the file and actually read the question. So for example, this one, 1.3, um, asks you to modify the code here, okay, to satisfy a certain condition. So to run this code block, I'm just gonna press Control and Return. Okay, and under there it says, enter your name. So let me just put in Michael. Okay, press Return, and it says, hello, Michael. But the question is, um, modify this so that it says good morning to me. So instead of it saying hello, we want it to say good morning. So we want you to actually change this code here to reflect the question. And there's, as you progress through the file, some of these are, are code questions and it will most often say your code below this line. So if you're gonna add code, you just press return a few times, there's some lines and you can put my code here, okay? And the, there'll be examples and explanations. So if it's just information, it'll be in a markdown cell. And if it's code you need to run, it'll be in a code cell. And every cell can be accessed by double clicking on the cell. And every cell can be run by doing just control return. So gonna give me an error because my code here, that's, that's English, it's, it's not a valid Python. Uh, program. Okay, it's not a valid Python there. So, so this is how we're going to um, run the labs with Python. This is the environment we're going to use. And if you look into the Jupyter Lab environment, this is a very common kind of workflow to use in data science. So, I decided the best the best way to do this was to demonstrate um, how to get started. And hopefully, this video has been helpful, and you can get started and if you've not done Python before, this should be a really good introduction.